it for the Wednesday class on the 19th of June, which I missed. Now, I enjoyed the, the talk a lot, but what I thought I'd do today, I'd repeat most of it, but add my local knowledge, which because Carl is not local, you would have known. Not a lot, but bits and pieces which could add to the, the talk. So if we start with uh, the maid of Kevin Edward, we all know the, the story. Um, it's, uh, it's based on historical fact and a mix of myth and legend. Okay, it is one of the great romantic stories of, uh, of Wales. And people actually come from all over the world to visit the Kevin Edward mansion and, um, and the church to see what all this happened or was supposed to have happened. <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know where Gernadra is, um, if you go from my stage, sorry, Bergen to my stage on the A4063, you'll pass through the village of Coitrahane, and a couple of miles after that, there's a left-hand turning, a narrow lane, which goes up to, to the mansion, and it's about a quarter mile up there. Years on, settle down. So the for the story, we have to go back to the late 17th century, sorry, the late, 18th, late 17th century into the 18th century. And in the manner of Kevin Edward then, were the wealthy Thomas families, uh, William Anne and Catherine. Um, they had uh, a daughter, their firstborn, Anne, who was born and baptized in May 1704. Later, a second child was born, a son, but he died in infancy, leaving Anne as the sole heiress to the estate. Now, Kath uh, Catherine, the mother, um, as Anne grew, had a little social climber, and they knew the another wealthy family, which lived just over the hill from where they were, of a Mount Baden in a farm called Cumrisca, the Maddox family. And they were connected because Anthony Maddox Sr. Um, was a lawyer and he handled the affairs of the Kevin Edward estate. So when Anne became a teenager, um, they became betrothed, much against her will, to um, Anthony's younger son, also Anthony, who was also training to be a lawyer as it happened. Um, so, into her teens, uh, we now have to look at uh, Clangonan village, and here's where Will Hopkins comes into the, the story. Will lived in the village, and he was a, a local bard, um, he was a good-looking young man, he had a way with the ladies, plenty of wit, etc., and charm, and but by trade he was a bit of a DIY builder, he was a thatcher, a plasterer, a tiler, etc., and the mansion required some repairs, so Will went over there to do a lot of work. And there he would spend days doing what he had to do on the roof, etc., etc. And that's where he met Anne. Over the following weeks, they became uh, very friendly and infatuated, in fact, with each other. And this is where the, the love bug uh, kicked in. Um, it was noticeable then by her family that... Uh, what was happening. So after a few weeks, Will was told to leave and not to return. So what Anne did then was continue the relationship via letters which she, she wrote and had a, one of her servants to uh, smuggle out and actually take to, to, to Will at, at the Clangonite. And there's where the correspondence continued, etc., etc. And this too was eventually found out by the family and at that point, Anne was confined to the house. This continued as well, the, the liaison, uh, and eventually she was confined then to her bedroom where she was locked in, had her meals, etc., delivered, and all writing materials were, were returned, were uh, removed. And this is where the myth comes in now to, to relay her messages of love to, to Will. She was supposed to have written uh, brief letters on large sycamore leaves in her own blood, which again was smuggled out and taken to well. Do you believe that? <laughs> I certainly don't. But it all adds to the myth and the legend, etc. 
So the betrothal continued and the marriage um, happened, let's get it right, in May 1725, when Anne was then, she was 21. About this time as well, Will um, was reputed to have written um, one of the most famous uh, love songs in in Wales, dedicated to Anne, and second only to Mavanna, Miguel Yor Gwen of Gwyn, Watching the White Wheat, where he, um, he, he, he he sings about, talks about uh, watching the uh, wheat ripening and nurturing the wheat, the wheat meaning Anne. But then when the harvest comes, someone else gets the, the pleasure, not him, Anthony Maddox, etc., etc. Very famous song, the choirs love it, really do. After the marriage, um, Will was reputed to have worked in Bristol, and Anne became ever more unhappy. And her health deteriorated, we don't know why. Traditionally, she was supposed to have um, died from a broken heart, whatever that was. But certainly, there was, she had, must have had some underlying health problem. The result of all this was that um, she was in a bad way. She was dying. Will heard of this, and he rushed back, uh, rushed to the mansion, and uh, she was supposed to have died in his arms. That's the myth and the legend of it all. Um, and this aunt died then, this was 1727, this was June 1727, she died, and she was buried then in, uh, inside the church near the chancel. Um, Will continued to work in the village, uh, he died at the age of 41, um, Anne's widower, Anthony Maddox, went on to marry another heiress, and he had three children. Uh, he became under sheriff of Glamorgan, actually. And he died at the ripe old age of then of 69. So, so that, that's the story, um, fact and, and fiction. Um, where it came from, uh, we think we know. Uh, we have to go back to the Victorian era. In 1841, a new vicar was appointed to the village. Uh, Richard Pendrell Llewellyn. Now, his wife, uh, Mary Catherine, uh, was a very clever woman. She was a translator, a writer. She loved history and folklore. And we think she went around the parish gathering snippets of information about the maid. And um, no doubt that the, the legend was embellished, etc. And what we hear now is the, the folklore and legend part of it came from her. But it's a great story. Um, books have been written about it. Um, Joseph Parry even wrote an opera about the Medicare of Nedra. Um, and there was even a film out made it, uh, of it, actually. Uh, this was back in 1910 uh, by a certain William Hager. William Hager was one of the um, pioneers of the cinematographic um, uh, era. Um, he made two films in the area, one, The Maid of Kevnedra, which has now gone totally, and another one called The Poacher. And in The Poacher, William introduced the chase sequence and the close-up sequence. So if ever Hollywood tells you that it came from them, it didn't, it came from him in South Wales. So he's a very important person in the, uh, in the story of the cinema in South Wales. So that's basically the story of uh, The Maid of Kevnedra. Uh, whatever you want to believe, believe it, but it's, it's a wonderful story, it really is. Um, I just, before I finish on Kevin Edver, I'd just like to talk about the name Kevin Edver. Uh, Kevin in Welsh means the ridge or hillside, and Edver is, is uh, corn or cornfields. So Kevin Edver traditionally means the ridge or the cornfields. But there's another translation of the word adver and slight spelling, which many Welsh scholars believe, rather than the contrary ones. And this is uh, the ridge of wailing. Adver also means wailing. Now, this is interesting because just a half a mile from Kevin Edwin Man Mansion, there's a very old farmhouse called Mice Cadlow, which when you interpret that, it means Battle of the Lower Field. And just the other side of my cut out. There's also 
uh, another farm, old farm, called Gadlis, which means the place of battle. So if you link all these three together, the Ridge of Wailing, Battle of the Lower Field, and um, <coughs> the place of battle, this certainly indicates that some sort of uh, conflict and blood, blood, bloodletting went on there in, at some point in the past. So I'm convinced there was some sort of uh, battle went on in that area during the Norman period, uh, in the 12th century, when they were trying to establish a foothold in the uplands of, uh, of Glamorgan. So, so that's the um, that, that's the maid story. Um, so let's um, now move on to Llangonid, the village. Now, Llangonid itself is um, it's a gem of a village. It's uh, one of the classic hilltop villages of the Blaenau or the Welsh uplands. It's classic in its layout. It's got a central church and graveyard. It's got a vicarage, no longer a vicarage of the tavern. It's got a tithe barn. No pub, and it's also got um, a traditional pub, the old house. Uh, it's also got um, a second pub, which people don't know about, the new inn, um, which has been defunct as a pub for many, many years. And it's also got um, Bethesda, um, the first non conformist chapel in the Finby Valley, and one of the very first in Glamorgan, uh, which, which opened in 1799. Now, for the origins of Llangonid, um, we have to go back to uh, Canoid. Um, and traditionally, in the 6th century, Canoid, who was a warrior priest spreading the gospel, came to the, um, came to the area which is now Llangonid. And there must have been a village there um, from a very early period, actually, because the, it's on a hilltop, it's uh, on the leeward side of a hill facing south, and there are springs nearby. So it was probably uh, occupied back in the Iron Age and before. So Canoid came there in the 6th century and founded a Christian cell on or near the site of the present day church. And the cell would have been some rudimentary hut to be built for himself. And there he would actually preach the gospel with his preaching cross outside where people would come and, and listen to what he's got to say, etc. Um, the, the church developed, Christianity developed, and he would take his, Christ, his uh, preaching cross around the, the parish, spreading the word, and also over the years he would recruit other young men to do the same thing. When he passed away, obviously Christianity was well established, and the, the movement gathered pace, etc. And the church then would have been um, built in, in, in timber, simple church. And at some point, the, the practice of worshiping on one day of the week came in, the Sabbath. Not sure when that happened. But then people would come from all around uh, and listen to what the incumbent priest of the day had to say, etc. Um, the things stayed that way until the then, sorry, the 12th century when the, the Normans arrived, uh, and the time obviously here yeah, um, establishing control much harder than the Romans before them. But uh, when some degree of stability had been established, the, the Normans then helped to build the, uh, the church in stone. Um, at the same time, obviously, building uh, churches is a thirsty job, so an alehouse would have been would have cropped up quite uh, quite close by, and this is the famous old house, which claims to be the old house, oldest uh, pub in Wales, and maybe it is, dating from 1147, which probably ties up with the period we're talking about now, when the church was built, uh, the pub went up as well quickly to uh, satisfy the thirst of the, uh, the workers then. Um, at some point, and Carl mentioned this in the talk, um, a rude screen was was um, made and installed in the church, separating the uh, nave from the chancel. Now, the rude screen was supposed to be in a finely sculpted um, figure of Christ on the cross with well, St. James one side and his mother Mary on the other side. And the Holy Road was very famous, and people came far and wide to see the Holy Road. Um, it disappeared. We don't know when. It could have been during the Reformation. 
It could have been during the Puritan assault on churches throughout, uh, throughout the country. We don't know. The strange thing is, Carl mentioned it, I've read about it, but the two um, most respected local historians in the valley, Thomas Christopher Evans, Cadro, and Brinnie Richards, never mentioned the rule screen at all. And I don't understand that now. One little bit. It's a bit of a mystery. The church uh, presently um, is, uh, has Welsh services, uh, English services, etc. Um, it has two graveyards, the old graveyard in which the, the church stands, um, and the new graveyard. And combined, it's probably the biggest graveyard in, uh, in Europe, let alone in this country. And the, the, it, all star, it all stands in the fan, the enclosure. Uh, so fan canoe stands for the enclosure of canoe. So, what else can we say? Right, let, let, let's go back to, to uh, the, 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 um, the early priests. The first recorded um, priest we know of comes in 1234. And this comes from the records of Canterbury. And the first incumbent priest in the church in 1234 was someone called, someone called Grono. It's likely he wasn't a full priest, but a chaplain to the garrison of soldiers in Tangonai Church, which was just, which was just on the lane. And for the first uh, registered vicar, uh, we have to go to 1288. And that is someone called, uh, John D. Bononia, John of Boulogne, um, indicating that he was from Italy, which wasn't unusual in those days because people did come from, uh, from the continent uh, to, to, um, to be priests, etc. So there's been many books written about the church, and if you haven't been there, do so. Um, well, the grave is there. Uh, the grave of Vernon Harchon is there. He was the first miner ever to be elected um, to the cabinet. He was in the 1924 Ramsey MacDonald cabinet as postmaster general. And also just outside the porch is um, the grave of Samuel Jones, the father of nonconformity in Wales, a much respected figure. And inside the porch, we have a couple of interesting stones. Um, one, and the most important one, is a socket stone. A stone which has got an oval hole in it and during one of the one of the renovations of the 16th century. The church has had a number of renovations, uh, the latest one being in 1893, but all the work was funded by Emily Talbot of the Markham of Faith. Um, this socket stone, it is worth visiting the church to look at the socket stone. But it's unusual, it's claimed to have been the original socket stone where Canoy placed his preaching cross before the church was built to, to, to preach. Um, if that's the case, why is it all shaped and not just a hole? Interesting. But it could be. It could be. Um, and inside the church as well, there are two ancient uh, tomb slabs um, which were discovered many years back. They both now um, are attached to the tower wall inside and they both all three of them depict uh, various uh, versions of the Calvary cross, you know, the steps going up to the, the cross, etc., uh, indicating the ascent to heaven. And you see, the, the, the last thing to say about the church before we move on is uh, Carl mentioned the oak pews from the original church back in the 13th century. Uh, the old oak pews uh, were at uh, the back of the church. And I sat in them some years back, and believe me, I didn't want to sit in them for long. It was hard as concrete and not very comfortable. Now, you can still see those, um, those pews if you go to St. Fagans and go into a St. Tidal's church. And they're not in the main part of the church, but you can look through one of these side uh, apertures, and they are there, actually. So the church, like many ancient churches, has got a lot of history to it. I would say a lot of books written about it, and certainly worth a visit if you haven't been. Um, the tithe barn I mentioned now is the uh, part of the corner house in, and if you go into the house, into the 
uh, we'll go to the back area, you can see then. So we've got a very high ceiling, etc. And it's got a it's got a checkered history again. And Carl mentioned a, a ghost there. Yes, there's a ghost reported there. And one time it used to be an undertaker's as well. So it's had quite a varied uh, life at uh, the Corn House Inn. It used to be a series of cottages at one time as well. And the old house, of course, uh, was a famous um, a famous pub throughout Wales. Uh, but unfortunately, um, about five years back. Um, it was closed down because uh, of money laundering and drug taking and other things by one of the owners, sadly. It lay dormant for quite a while, then it was bought by um, a number of businessmen and it's now been uh, uh, renovated um, and um, in a more modern style. It's done an excellent job of renovation, but all the old corridor has been gone. And to my mind, it's not the old house anymore, just a new version of the old house. But again, worth a visit. It's a lovely little village, it really is. Now then, down the lane, we have uh, the remains of uh, Llangonoid Castle. Um, it's on a bit of a spur on farmland, with the land dropping away sharply on three sides. You have to go through the farm of Castell Cork Farm to get into it. It's, uh, it's on private land, but uh, the owner, Mr Richard, uh, has no problem with people actually going through to the, to the, to the, to the castle. You can't see much now. You can certainly see where the curtain wall was. You can see where the wet moat was and where the dry moat was and where the entrance way, way is now. Um, you can go into the courtyard, etc. Um, you can also see in, on the left hand side a, some sort of stone structure which goes down into the earth, a steps going down, like a cellar area. Um, there has been some excavation carried out in 1904, but nothing particularly significant, just then pottery shards, etc. The records state that it was garrisoned by 28 soldiers at one point, and it was there obviously once Norman Bore had been established to just to keep an eye on the, 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 Welsh, uh, the Welsh tribal chiefs, who still caused a fair amount of trouble, and the castle was probably built around about 1200, just before Caffili Castle, and the Richard de Clare because the, the entrance gateway to the castle, you could just make out, it's very similar to that of Caffili Castle, which was a bit, a little bit later. Um, last week, Carl also mentioned one of the base stones, the sculpted base stones, was of Sutton Stone. Was it going on the right-hand side? It was. And there was also a famous stone there called the Fleur de Lis Stone, a lovely stone with, this, uh, with a lovely motif car carved on, onto it. That stone has now disappeared, but I know it's there. It was there at one time because during my Boy Scout days, the field right in the front of the castle was uh, our, our scout camp. And every year, twice a year, we had our annual camp there. We used to camp outside and uh, play around, etc., do what Boy Scouts do, etc., etc. Have our uh, nightly campfires in the courtyard itself, singing uh, King Ganguly and uh, and uh, other things, and telling ghost stories, etc. Um, the castle was um, was attacked in 1262, I think it was, no, 1257, uh, by Sir Wadinop Griffith, one of his last raids into South Wales, and badly damaged. Thereafter, it was repaired, but then again, in 1282, it was attacked again by one of the Welsh. Um, uh, we went to tribal chiefs and uh, badly damaged. And after that, we are told in the record that it was never rebuilt and just allowed to deteriorate, etc. Um, and that's that's Langonite Castle. That, that there is a strange tale about here, which I don't believe. But Brindley Richards, uh, one of the uh, one of the valley's um, most prominent historians, I mentioned earlier, he. Um, he came up with a wonderful story about um, because he maintained there was a one of the records indicate that the castle was still standing in 1351. Now the Order of the Garter was established in 1343 by Edward the Third. I think it was 1843, and he maintained that the king on one of his hunting uh, forays into the Clindry Valley, 
because at this time the, the valley was known as Tiriach, the Earl's Land, after the Earl of Gloucester, etc., because it was very rich in wildlife and, and huge hunting parties used to, to come there. And the story is that Edward III and one of his, uh, and many of his uh, followers came on a hunting uh, party and actually stayed in the castle and a banquet was held uh, on his behalf. And that's where the famous incident of the lady actually losing a garter came from. And that's where the order of the garter stemmed from. Not the English castle, but Castle of Cork in good old my stage. Well, that didn't exist in Cork. Do you believe that? I'd love to believe that. I really would, but somehow I can't see it happening. Not in a small castle like uh, Castle of Cork. But, but, but again, uh, we're worth a visit, certainly. Um, there is a story connected with the castle as well concerning uh, Edward the Third son, Edward the Second. Now, Edward the Second, you probably know, wasn't a good king. He was supposed to have been homosexual, um, and uh, the barons didn't like him at all. Um, he separated from his wife uh, Isabella, the she-wolf of uh, of France, um, and uh, went into, into bed literally with uh, one of the marshals. Uh, Roger Mortimer, there is an army to dispose of him. Uh, Edward decided to flee. Um, he fled uh, to uh, South Wales in order to escape oil, and the story goes. Uh, when he got to Neath Abbey uh, and with um, Mortimer's forces uh, closing in on him, he decided to return to Caffili Castle to seek refuge there with his friend and ally, the dispenser, the Hugh Dispenser, the hated Hugh Dispenser. So he decided to go inland, um, he went through Neath, and he came to St. Donald Castle. No one was there, thinking it was still standing. But this was 1327, and it probably wasn't at that point. Uh, but again, you don't know, you don't know. So what, what he did then, um, having found the castle deserted, he made his way to a local farm called Gethilieno, just a mile away, and there he took refuge. And the story is then that uh, with a search party in the area, he hid in a large oak tree uh, just outside the farm. He evaded capture there and continued to make his way back towards Caffili Castle uh, through the hinterland. And when he came to an area close to Tonnerevel, that's when he was captured. He was uh, taken up to Kenilworth Castle, where he was forced to abdicate in favour of his son Edward III, and later transferred to Berkeley Castle, where he was killed, probably by smothering, or not by that infamous red hot poker incident. And definitely in a farm now, where the old oak tree stood, and. A commemorative stone was placed there called Cutter Edward, 1327. And again, you can still see that. Uh, was it true? There's no reason why the story shouldn't be too true, because it ties in with all this historical fact, etc. But one of the legends and myths and stories and uh, historical facts, which uh, all make the history of Hangonoid a uh, very rich history, it really is. And many books have been written about it. So if you want to know a little bit more about uh, Hangonoid, its history, um, there's lots to read, read about it. I think that about wraps up all I can say at the moment. Um, anyone got any sort of uh, comments or stories? And you must have visited the uh, the area at some time. You need to go to the uh, the, the pubs in Sangona to have a meal. I think everyone's been for a meal in the Sangona in uh, well, the old mm -hmm. to the house. It would be really nice to have a, a day, you know, a little trip up there and. You know, it'd be nice to go into the um, church, you know. Yeah, yeah. It sometimes would, it would. If, if you go, it's not open, you know, a lot of these places aren't open. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I think you need to wait to see what happens now, but it's strange yeah. like uh, mm. having meals indoors. The old yeah, house and the, and the corner house are opening up now for indoor meals. Yeah, I, I've heard. see how they manage it. Really I've do. heard a lot about Langonite. Um, <clears throat> there was an artist living, I think he was living, he had a studio there, um, Brown his name was, um, yeah. mm. I've forgotten the, the Christian name now, 
but he was a French Canadian and he, he used to paint a lot of um, sort of mythological scenes. Um, well, I don't think, I, I think they might have been connected to the Welsh uh, mythology, but I, I got a feeling it's probably the French Canadian. And um, I followed his work for a while because he, he was a very um, significant artist. But then he died, and he died in quite young, really, about, he was only in his 50s. Um, well, Wales is the most important artist, probably came from Wales, you know. Sorry from my state, Christopher Williams. Wales is the most famous artist, came from my state. And his ashes are scattered on the hill, going up to the church now. You could see his, uh, his uh, famous painting of Mamad's work in the First World War. It was in uh, the museum in Cardiff uh, a year or two back, whether it's still there, I don't know. Mm. But he painted the, um, the famous investiture of Edward II, Prince of Wales in Carnarvon in 19... Oh, yes, um, yes. Oh, well, yeah. this, this, this one I'm thinking of is, the, is a, he was a modern artist, so well, you never heard of him. No, wouldn't no. have um, yeah. been attracted yeah. to his work. <laughs> But yeah. um, the nice thing is that he loved Wales, and um, he's actually got a buried. He's buried in um, Merthyr Church, and there's mm. a lovely modern stone there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's that's all I know really. But I would yeah. like to go to Langdale. Get get it. <laughs> get annoyed. Well, you've been there, haven't you? You must have been there. I must have been there. But of course you have. Everyone's been there. I've driven through. You can't drive through Tangle Road. You've got to stop there. You've got to. But what's there? It's such a pretty village. Yeah. yeah. You probably. Are, I mean, the thing is, I've only ever gone to my stake for. Um, the only reason I I did actually work in my stake library at one time, but. Um, um, the only t reason I would go to my stake probably would be to, to do some You've shopping. You've probably gone to Lower Sangam, uh -huh. uh, not Sangam village. No. Was a few oh, I know it's off my the road. You've got to go off the road, have not you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyone else got any... Um, have you been there, Pam? No, not at all. No, go to my stake. No, I don't know that area at all. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Because you've been mm. over a few times, haven't you? Yeah, Wales. I'll have to do that yeah. one. One day. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, well, I mean, yeah. when you've got to play Glamorgan, you know. It's, very leafy, you... it's a very leafy valley anyway, and it's U-shaped, you know, not V-shaped, so it's very broad. It's like an amphitheatre, the valley. Oh, you've got, you've got the space to breathe, uh, shall we say. Yeah, it's got its problems, like most valley towns, of course. Mm. Uh, yeah. Right. I'm quite, quite interested in, in, you know, in the the mythology or not the mythology, but you don't know whether it's uh, myth or, or truth, you know, legend or truth. Um, but there, we well, well, there are other stories as well. Is that there's the ghost of Pe Pentra? Is a little was a little farm close to the village. There's a there's a famous ghost story about about the uh, about the maid there. Uh, there's also stories that are apart from the maid of Kevnetra. There's also a story about the maid of Tital when and the maid of Pentra. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, Kevin Edward obviously is the, the, the famous one, you know. Yeah. 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 It's a beautiful so, village, very pretty. And yeah, uh, yeah. I've been in the graveyard there. I think I saw the grave. Um, his, is it? Will's oh, underneath the tree. Will's under the yeah. He's, he's there on the, on the western wall near the, uh, near the oak tree. Only a few yards from the corner of the house, actually. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. pub there is gorgeous. We used to go out. You have to, they never took reservations. You just had to wait, you know, in the. Well, yeah, pub. well, the, the, the old mm -hmm. house it was, it was Richard David, you know, and whatever you want to do, you go in there, and whatever you wanted, he did me do it for you, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was a little lingle, mm -hmm. a little old bar, you know, the real nails, et cetera. It really was a super little, uh, it didn't say it was an institution. The old mm -hmm. house, you were not a mm -hmm. pub. Everyone loved the old house, and it's, it's gone now, it's spoiled. Yeah, I'm sure so, it is the old yeah. house. 
Yeah. Well, I've, I've been here for 47 years, I think. No, no, sorry, 37. <laughs> 37 years. So was it there then? The old oh, yeah. House? Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. I heard of the old house. That was the thing I, yeah. I remember. Because well, what we'll have to do, is... what we'll have to do um, next year when things hopefully will settle down, mm. we'll have to get together at the village and have a walk around the village. You can take around the village and show you these things, yeah. and hopefully they'll have a meal as well in in the pub, etc. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I think yeah. we should wait for next year really because yeah. nothing like that will happen this year. No, 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 but I think you know if if Carl's going to be <clears throat> you know not um I'm sure he's you know he's got a lot of area to cover now, hasn't he with with all the oh yeah, yeah. The classes, so we ought to be doing our own walks really as well, you know, just once a month or something, you know, yeah, it'd be fun, yeah, yeah because mm. <laughs> well, I, I i um I did meet, um, no, the, what I was going to say was, Declare, you said about Declare helping build something. The and castle, I, yeah. Is this castle was built in the, uh, in the days of Richard Declare yeah, and his son Robert? Because um, I've been in touch with this village recently over in Ireland where my grandparents came from, and um, there's a castle there called Quintins. Quintin. Oh, yes, in Quintins, yeah. In Quintins, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know where it is, but there's hardly anything left, just a few stones. In where? In, in it's Wales? The, yeah, it's the other side, it's, it's, it's stalling down. Oh! In, in, near, near the birth end. you've got to go to the fields there, uh, but it's, it's, um, well, it's mentioned it on the record. The I thought it was the back of Cowbridge. Yeah, it is, it's what we're talking about, Cowbridge, yeah. Yeah. Down, well, yeah. well, well, this one is in Ireland. What I'm trying to oh, say is one, yeah. That yeah. it was made, it was built in Northern Ireland on the coast and it's called Quintin, St. Quintin, you know, oh, so it's right, with yeah. an I instead of an E. And, um, and, the yeah. Declare, and the Declares built that one. Yeah. So it's... it's hey, I, I, I've forgotten something actually, talking about ghosts and my Boy Scout days. Yeah. Um, of course, something strange used to happen uh, during our camps, generally in August. Um, one early morning, uh, we were all sleeping in bell tents and different tents, and we were awakened uh, by the sound of singing, men singing. So we, we went outside in the dark, and yes, it was there, okay. We looked at our watches, this was about half past two in the morning, you know. So where was the singing come from? Strange. <laughs> the only place it could have come from is the old house. Mm. But would men be singing in the old house at half past two in the morning? Mm. Especially when clubs used to close at 11 o'clock then by law. Mm. Very strange. And the other thing, even stranger, and I remember this well, on another time, another occasion, um, you could go out to your tent in the early hours and you wouldn't be able to see your feet because this white mist kept creeping in from the castle area. Mm -hmm. It was waist high. You could stand in it and you couldn't see anything from your waist down. It was just oh. swirling around, swirling around. Because we've been impressionable young Boy Scouts. We, we yeah. called it the of Kevlar, we called it. Yeah. But it was when Oberton County saw the mist, it really was as it swept around at just at that height, you know, didn't raise. Oh. A, real, a real ground mist, you know. Yeah, happy days there, happy days. Yeah. <laughs> and I, still I, I, I used to believe that um, we used to go past this house and, you know, I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I don't think anyone had doorbells or, you know, in my area, but on the, on the main road, they had doorbells and some of them had lights in them. Yeah. And I used to tell my friend that there was a ghost in that light. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd go past the house, you know, when it was going dark, coming home from school when it was going dark, and we'd kind of go, oh, you know, like, oh, oh yeah. it's the ghost, it's the ghost. <laughs> you make a ghost story up out of anything. 
you know what I used to do? Naughty boys. In, in the street where I was born, there were two rows of houses, um, and they were about uh, what 50 foot apart with a road going down the middle of it. Yeah. What we used to do, we used to go on one side of the uh, of the road, um, get some black cotton, tie oh, it to the door, and lock the door. On the other side of the road, yeah. hide behind the edge of the other house, and just pull the door knock and knock on the way there. We would pull the, the cotton, and then the door would open, and people would look out, and we keep knocking it, you know, until they open the door, and you could see the expression on their faces. <laughs> that was naughty, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a naughty boy at one time. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, we they used to send us up this, you know, and knock the door. <laughs> we had to go and knock the door and run away. But yeah, I think, well, yeah. I think the, string, the string bit was better. I think, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> and it could be through the cotton, of course. You no, know, it would be very, you know. in, pain, yeah. in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, yeah, dear, yeah. yeah. Bill, what about uh, these big old houses? You were talking about the mansion. Is the mansion still there, or the big house? Yeah, the, 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 the original mansion is is a ruin, obviously crumbling. But uh, a house was built next to it, so you've got coming of a new, and you got the original as well. And the, the lady then question, I think her name is Judith. Yeah, I'm sure it's Judith, Judith, something. Judith Thomas. Um, I know I was there many years back, and she was quite amenable to people coming in, you know, and talking about it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, well, she's still there now. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. What about the house of the um, the, the first husband, uh, the husband she married? Oh, uh, Combriska. Yeah, Combriska is still there as a working farm. Oh. Mm. Working farm, yeah. In fact, Combriska, to get to it, you know where the park slip, uh, park, uh, park slip site is? Yeah. The nature park? Nature park? Mm hmm. If you, um, it's just on the hillside there, above it, by about half a mile. Oh. Come risk it. Well, yeah. Apparently that's open. Yeah. And the cafe is open. Park slip, nature reserve. The is open. Yeah. I passed it last week and it was open, but I don't know whether the cafe was open. I can yeah. see the car park was open. Well, they're saying, you know, it's open now and you can go in for, for a coffee, you know. Yeah. Um, right. And what was, do you remember that, um, we were talking about that quarry between, uh, kind of, you could see it on the, on the left. The limestone there. one. What was it? The limestone one. The lime, lime yeah, one. we thought it was limestone, but it wasn't, was it? What was it? It was some unusual, it was, um, Gypsum? it was, Something unusual, yeah. It was um, perhaps Bill wasn't with us, and it was Dell who told us, wasn't it? Oh, it was Dell because I thought it was limestone, hmm. but um, it was something else. And, uh, very I, white, it's, very, very it's white. white, yeah. And I always thought it was limestone, you know, but apparently it's something else, and I can't remember. Maybe it's gypsum, like you said. But, um, no. well, that was very interesting, Bill. It uh, captured your imagination, and I like your storytelling. Very good. Yes, <laughs> yes the storytelling was very good. Yes. There we are. Where's the truth and where's the fact? Yes. Where's the myth? Where's the legend? <laughs> it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. If you want to believe it, believe it. Yeah, yeah. But it'd be interesting to, to know what she died of, though, the Medicare Medicare. Because in those days, 1725, they didn't record the cause of death on the, the there were no birth certificates then, of course, just the burial record. She didn't, she didn't have any children. No, 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 she didn't marry, there were not years. Married in 25 and she died in 27, you see. She had come in. So maybe, maybe they didn't uh, um, contribute. I, 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 yeah, I mean, maybe if you're not unhappy, well, I mean, yeah. you can die of a broken heart because it's like depression, isn't it? Yeah. Sure wouldn't it, really. it wouldn't be yeah. called that, it would be called something else, wouldn't it? So, yeah. some other message, yeah, 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 it's a great story. 
And there is one image of Anne as well, the famous painting of her. So you can, you can tell what she looks like or what you think the artist thinks uh, she looks like. Where's the well. art? It was in the old house, actually, the maid. Oh, wow. um, it's, it's, certainly the, the, it's certainly in the history of the Finley Valley by Bernie Richards. Do you, you want to see it? Hang on. I mean, it's obviously quite a significant, uh, you know, bear, story. Bear, bear with me. There we are. Can you see that? Can you bring it a bit closer? No. 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 Oh, 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 right down there, is it? Can, can you see the picture there? Just move my hand. Uh, and yeah, if you stop talking, yeah. Bill will be able to show it longer. Mm. Oh, lovely. Can you see the picture? Pretty, yeah. Yeah. It's the only known image of Anne. Oh. Oh. I'll have a look for it. I'll see if I can find have it. Have a little cry, yeah. The yeah. lady who died of a broken heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very sad. Very sad. There we are. Yeah. Well, that's that, that's well done, Bill. Well, I, did, I, I had a bit of excitement this week, but I, I don't know. I don't know whether to tell you.